Intimations of a Raid by John Kirk Morris, with Bill Wallace as Bill Groves and Angela Phillips as Andrea. Who? Yes, put him on, please. Jock, how are you? No, no, not yet. Yes, I'll pass that on. What? Of course I do. Look, this is a business line, you know. Hold on. The wind just blew something in. It's Jock Craigie, Bill. Oh, God, don't take it. Thanks. Jock. Yes, just this minute. Sure, not before one, though. Yes, I can do that. And if you have a minute, get out job numbers for proctors. <laughs> You uncouth Scotch man. Be seeing you. Good morning. Oh, hello to you too. Where were you? On a good siding outside Sheffield. Nice. Not to us. One coal truck is much like another. Is Cyril free? Tony Nolan's with him. Oh, uh, should I break in? Better not. Have a cup of coffee and tell me about Sunderland. No coffee, thanks. But I'll take a seat if you don't mind. When did you set out? Six this morning. Look, what happened? Oh, unspeakable horrors. Fog, slow trains, cold food, the usual. Tell me about Sunderland. Oh, that was one of those workaday muck-ups engineered by our packing department. The crates had all been marked with the wrong job numbers. Is it bad? Proctors were very nice about it. And tough. We lose money. Much money? About a month's operating income. Well, you don't seem very perturbed. We could have lost the contract. In that case, Miss Brooke, I would froth at the mouth and bang heads together until they rang like a peal of church bells. How long have things been here? Well, not much can happen in four days. Is that how long it was? Seemed like a fortnight. I can't find Susan, by the way. You won't. She's taken indefinite leave. What? Her grandmother died. She went home for the funeral and decided she was of more use there than here. Well, she could have told me. There's a letter on your desk. Oh, uh. Shall I sign one of the girls from the pool? In the pool? I want a secretary, not a mermaid. <laughs> All right. How would it be if I pitched in while Susan's away? Do you have the time? I'll make it. You have to take your suits to the cleaners yourself, though. <laughs> We've got ourselves a deal. Fine. I'll bat Cyril if you want. No, no, let him be. I'd better push up. Oh, before you do... Yes. There's something in Friday's local you ought to see. Hmm? This is what Cyril's so exercised about. Inside the front page... To me, it sounds like a latrine rumour. Well? Oh, this is cute. Not a word of truth in it. It's clever. Who are the Fuds? Fuds, machine tool makers. Uh, Duisburg, I think. In competition with us? Yeah. And big. They could swallow us easily. Where did this come from? The editor won't say. Did he print this without consulting Cyril first? Cyril wasn't available for comment, he claimed. He's lying. Oh, you have to put up or retract. That's what Cyril but this says. could do us a damage, aren't you? Look at the headline for a start. Redundancies at Falconer's query. Threat to 300 jobs. They've got us in the hands of the liquidators. How could they be so irresponsible? Excuse me. Yes? He's here, sir. Yes, I will. He wants to see us, Bill. And I smell sulfur. <sighs> Nothing less than an unqualified retraction will do, Tony. Quite. If I have to, I'll threaten legal action. It shouldn't come to that. Those idiots might think twice with an injunction pending. Yes. No, come in. Sit. Thank you. Good trip, Bill. Oh, I've had worse. I can't remember when. Later. Come on. Shall I take notes, sir? Yes, I think you'd better. I'd like to read you something, Bill. Yeah, that fairy tale in the hour. You see? Yeah, just a few minutes ago. We had to scotch that, Cyril. And double quick. Mm. I'd like to stick the editor on a pile of newsprint and put a match to it. <laughs> Bad PR, sir. Simple mm. justice. My phone hasn't stopped ringing since Friday evening. Stockholders wanted to know if they should sit tight or hold on for a price. Some of my oldest friends, too. A couple of them started to slang me for dealing behind their backs. That hurt, Bill. You have a solution? What? Ask the Herald's editor for an interview. Why? Right. Give him a resume of the company's affairs, telling me I have absolutely no plans for a change of ownership, and insist he prints the rebuttal in full. Will he do that? Simple justice, to use your own words, sir. Uh, who is he? Wadden, a new man. 
Well, you'd better arrange it, Andrea. Yes, sir. Now, that's the public settled. But how do I satisfy my friends? Well, it's not so simple. We'll have to let the murky waters settle. Take over talk always leaves a bad smell. Yeah. I'd like to know the source of this piece of garbage. Well, it would make a first-class ploy, wouldn't it? It started a little panic among the shareholders. Mm. The false story dies, but the anxiety lingers on. But to what end, Bill? An authentic raid. You think so? It's plausible, Bill. Except in the details. Why? Well, we're not a publicly quoted company. Any approach to the shareholders must be made direct, and not a single share has changed hands for months and months. Collapse of trial balloon, I think. Can we check with the stockholders, Tony? A ring round, you mean? Just for confirmation. There's no need, Cyril. All changes have to be notified to me anyway. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I promise you, there haven't been any. If there were, I'd tell you immediately. You think we're staring into a dry well? I'd bet my salary on it. <laughs> well, a fraction of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, this this story has all the whiff of lunchroom gossip. The choice of France was quite inspired, though, Tony. Mm, so some gossip is better than others. So, what's the order of business? I'll kill the fudge, sir, man. All right. Tony draft a reply for this Wadham fellow at the Herald and insist he eats it. Do you want to speak to her? No. Very well. What then? The shareholder. Any suggestions? You could circularise them, sir. How do you mean? Oh, print a few dozen copies of a disclaimer and send one to each prominent stockholder. Can you do that, Andrew? They'll be ready to go this evening. Oh, then you're nominated. Any further ideas? No? Then we can break this up. Uh, you stay put, will you, Bill? May I have a word, too, sir? Uh, of course. I'll have that draft for you after lunch, sir. Good man. Uh, I'm sorry you had to come back to this nonsense, Bill. But it's a, it creates a rotten atmosphere to work in. Well, Andrew? Well, perhaps I'm wrong to harp on this, but... Say it. I was intrigued by what Bill said, that this rumour might be a smokescreen for a genuine takeover attempt. Yes? Well, if it is, shouldn't we try to find out? Well, how do we go about that? You simply ask me. Well, Andrea, dear, we're all too old for games. I'm sorry, I'll explain. I have a friend, a man, who works for a merchant bank in London. We... We'll keep it in reserve, Andrea. Thank you. Will you need me for anything, sir? Not for the present, no. I have to go to the works at noon, Bill. Do you want to lift? Uh, y yes, yes, I do. Yes, uh, thank you. I'll see you later, then. That's a bright young woman, Bill. Yes, that she is. And her figure isn't half bad either. Hmm? Old man's privilege, Bill. The harm is all in the eyes. <laughs> if a question of a directorship ever came up, I think she should get consideration. Yes, I agree, with uh, some qualification. Like what? She ought to run a department first. Well, that sounds reasonable. And then you need to know if she wants it. Well, wouldn't she? Well, I sense, uh, I don't know, that she has a... Full social life. Maybe business would interfere with it. Are you talking about men? The endowments are generous, Cyril. <laughs> well, uh, let's turn the page. Proctor's had a case, but they aren't going for the last drop of blood. Some bottoms will have to be kicked, Cyril. Uh, will you attend to it? Yes, Doc's expecting me. Uh, is everything as it should be? With the company? No, with the company chairman. Is it? Why do you ask? You have punches where your eyes should be. It's that boy of mine. No. Yes, this time he's really jumped the tram lines. Can you tell me? He's got himself embroiled with... Oh, hell. Did you ever know a kid with such a talent for cock-ups? Three schools in as many years, Bill. Nobody will have the bother of him now. No education, no prospects, not a glimmer of interest in anything. He raids his mother's purse and spends his time with that greasy bunch that hangs around the market. Once he came home like, a, like an alley cat with his ear half hanging off. Sixteen years old, Bill. The brother and sister never gave me a tithe of trouble. That's not the worst, Bill. On Saturday, Margaret found a syringe in his room. I had to do that. But it wasn't for spraying roses. Margaret brought it to show me. You know what an innocent she is. She asked me if the lad weren't diabetic and hadn't told her. <laughs> That's comic, isn't it? No, it's not. That stuff kills. 
Whatever else he is, Neville isn't stupid. How could he? Have you spoken to him about it? The need? No, I haven't. I'm 60, Bill. How do I talk to an unruly 16-year-old? I'd help him in any way I could. Yes, absolutely. But whenever I try to talk sensibly to the boy, his eyes glaze over and I might as well deal with a deaf mute. Sometimes I wonder if there's any point of bringing children into the world. Oh, Bill, uh, I shouldn't have said that. That's all right. How could I be so tactless? Yeah, forget it, Cyril. Go on with what you were saying. Well, that's it. I have a son who's retired from life before his 17th birthday. He was such a nice kid, too. I remember. Of course, he used to spend more time on your farm than he did with us. <laughs> uh, what's become of that, by the way? Uh, Gwen's living it. Still? That's what she was. Well, do you see anything of her? We haven't met him over a year. Ah. Any chance of you two getting together again? I simply don't know. The possibility is always in the back of my mind. She refuses to discuss it. That business must have been a fearful blow to her. To us all. I would have found her today. Oh? She has my debenture holding. I'd forgotten that. So, should somebody be nosing around, I ought to warn her. Your holding's intact, isn't it? What do you think? Oh, then there's no problem. With yours and mine, I mean Gwen's, and the pension fund's holding, we can't ever lose control. No. Uh, give her my love, Bill. Yes. Uh, well, I, I ought to be shuffling along. Bill? Hmm? Would you speak to young Nev for me? Bill? Get him to call me. Thank you. Well, you're lucky the professionals get 30 guineas an hour. <laughs> Send me your account and then bugger off. Be nice to me, so all my rates go up. Love <laughs> 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 Gwen, it's Bill. Well, can we talk? About what? Well, no, don't be alarmed. It's business. My solicitors deal with all that. Yes, I know, but we can deal with this ourselves. I don't want to talk to you. Uh, sorry, what is it? I'm leaving. What? For the works. Oh, yes. Are you all right? Yes, I'll, I'll get my coat. A few spots, that's all. Question, should I wipe or not? Leave it. It's pretty. If I crash, you're to blame. Do you mind being driven? Well, I'd rather go at my own rate. By a woman? Well, why not? Provided she can see the road and knows when to operate the wipers. Most men can't bear it. They think their male dignity is being assailed. Is yours, Bill? Why don't you just drive? I'm good at it, aren't I? Yes, you are. Don't hit that bus. <laughs> I'd like to talk about myself. Do you mind? We aren't being overheard. This friend that I mentioned in Cyril's office, yes. he wants me to work for him. Again, that is. He's an ex-boss? Yes, and rather more, if you get my drift. Yes, I do. But uh, you're undecided, is that it? I need to know how I stand in this company. Why are you smiling? Cyril and I talked on this subject less than an hour ago. Can you tell me what was said? Well, I don't see why not. We both thought you were ready for a step up. Why, thank you. But uh, whereas Cyril thought sooner... You think the time is not yet? Not exactly. You're overqualified for what you do now, but there's no vacant niche at present. You'd need departmental experience before you could join the board. How does that sound? Logical, but not encouraging either. Well, your name's at the top of the shortlist, Sandra. But maybe your friend's offer would suit your short-term interest better. What do you think? I want to stay here. Good. But in London, I'd get executive status straight away. 
It's a bigger fish pond. And lots more money. Is that what you want? It all helps, you know. I'm terribly ambitious, Bill. I'll watch my back. Well, that's not a bad thing to be, is it? Well, I've never thought so. But you must realise the ceiling at Falconers is fixed, and in your case it can't be very high. Because I'm not an engineer. Just so. In my position, what would you do? Oh, uh, I wouldn't grip the wheel so tightly. <laughs> Mr. Gardmark. And that's the approved driving school mode, firm but light at 120 degree angle. <laughs> Do you have a date for lunch? Oh, is this an offer, Miss Brock? Only of a lift back. I thought I'd have a sandwich with Alec Craigie. Well, that won't take very long. My offer stands. I'll let you know. That familiar refrain. Excuse me. Told them, you have to allow the specialist a wee bit of overtime without a half the machine shop sitting around scratching themselves. <laughs> what did they say? Oh, nothing complimentary, I can tell you. <laughs> One of them shop floor rub spears accused me of being a traitor to the working class. Didn't you bring up your Stalinist past? The moment wasn't the opportune. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? Well, you're drenched in pickle. What have you got? Uh, ham. Mild cured. I'll swap you. No. No one for one. Mine's are better. All right. All of these for one of those? Well, uh, you can keep the one you're bitten into. Agreed. Right. Oh, it's high time you got yourself some home cooking. Why? You're in a dreadful condition, man. How old are you? About 65. Getting that way. This is good. Genius? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's always been a puzzle to me, Jock. I oh, watched that. Why, thoroughly nice women always pick unsuitable men. For the same reason, highly trained craftsmen have lousy employers put over. Mm. Providence, eh? Mm. Oh, Ellis, I'm sorry about the mix-up in transport. <laughs> it's happened before. It's sure to happen again. Still, you got a guy stripped to lovely Sunderland out of it. <laughs> oh, I'll have to take it out your annual holiday. Well, eh? Next time I'll nominate you to go. <laughs> Is that a ring? Oh, eh, we're getting fractures in those castings we bought in from staff. No, I'll look in tomorrow. And I'll be sure to know. Mm. Listen, I wanted to ask you to confirm something for me. What? Where's Tom Finley at? In the Caribbean. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Isn't it? Well, I'll tell you a thing, Bill. Oh, bloody hell. What's wrong? Come back in a minute. <laughs> hey, you! Yes, you, you crazy woman! Put on a gun! Use the overhead can't they? And the gun and the half you have there. Okay, Joe. No sweat and no sweat. Oh, dear God. Why do they all come to me? Uh, sorry, what was I saying? Well, Tom Finlay. Aye. I saw him this morning. I did. And it's no my imagination either. You couldn't have. If it wasn't a Tom Finlay, it was his spitting image. Right down his tash and big flat feet. Where was it? Cowley's Golf Club. 17th Green, where it meets the road. I was driving past there at 8 o'clock. Well, it must have been somebody else. Damn it, Bill, I've played with Tom. I picked that ugly swing of his from a thousand. <laughs> and I recognise his partner. A crony of his, a solicitor called Victor Slade. I'm amazed. Oh, me too. He was teeing off with a nibbling. You need a four iron every time at a 17th. Well, perhaps he changed his mind or took the plane home. It doesn't signify, does it? No, but Tom's been in my mind a lot lately. Why? He's very thickly on Victor Slade. I know for a fact he discusses confidential pension fund business with him. How do you know? I heard him on that telephone. I caught a cross line from the switchboard. It was all Tommy and Vic and the investment plan for our portfolio. Bloody fool. Oh, well, I felt pretty sick myself. Does anybody else know about this? No, no, just herself. I'll have to ask him about it when he gets back. From the Caribbean, no? I asked him about the golf links out there. How do they compare with Cowley's like? <laughs> ah, this phony takeover rumour and the reappearing director in the same week. I'll wager you a packet of my delicious ham sandwiches that are connected. I feel a deep stern in my veins, William. That's gout. Oh, really, huh? Well, I'll tell you for nothing, you sardonic devil. 
Tom Finlay practically controls the fund's portfolio on his own say-so. Well, that's not allowed, is it? No, but it's what's done. He runs the trustees in circles, and Jack Harding and the myself at the union side can only watch like a pair of loonies with our mouths open. He has the expertise, you see, and we all have to do what the experts say, don't we? Will you do me a favour? No, I was. Well, can you lay hands on a recent list of pension fund investments? Ah, sure, when Tom Finlay gets back from his holiday. Well, not before. The accountants won't hear of it without the authority from Tom. But you're a trustee. Aye, and you see what that gets me. Well, I didn't realise things were like that. Well, you know surely that the fund is now bigger than the company. No, I didn't. Aye, it is. It could swallow Faulkner's for breakfast. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's five strangers, William. What? That's soon she be lassie from Cyril's office. Oh. Well, thanks for the company. It goes with the grub. Hello. Oh, a sparkling good day to you, too. Well done, Bill. Yes, thank you. You are looking exceptional well, Miss Brooke. Why, thank you. What a charming man. You should take lessons from him, Bill. Uh, may I carry you to your car, Miss Brooke? <laughs> yes, when I'm old and grey. Oh, dear, I can't wait that long. <laughs> Give my love to Jeannie. Je- who? I'll see you. Bye. Oh, hell, I'm in love again. A fruitful lunch? Yea and nay. I can usually clear a week's business over a sandwich with Jock, and uh, he appreciates the attention. Without Alec, I'd have to spend most of my time at the works. He thought he saw Tom Finlay this morning. Possible. Can you check for me? How do I do that? By flying to Bermuda? Bringing his files. Right. And telephone the Cowley's Golf Club and ask them if Mr. Finlay used the greens this morning. Do you mind? No, but I'd like to know the why of it. The man's entitled to spend his holidays where he likes, so why should he invent an elaborate fib? Alec made a mistake. I don't think so. This is called snooping, isn't it? I shouldn't ask you to do what I'm not ready to do for myself. That doesn't leave much for the rest of us. Oh? Uh-huh. By that, I mean you're not very generous of yourself. All this from a request to phone Tom Finley's house? No. This is something that's been festering in my head for months. It's not a criticism. We occupy offices about 30 feet apart and have done for more than two years. For five days in a week, we must spend at least two hours of that day in each other's company. How long is that, Bill? Fifty, uh, a thousand hours. Yes. And after all this time, I don't feel I know you at all. Why is that? I'm your old style manager, Andrea, with a slide rule in his top pocket and a proper regard for the decencies. A dinosaur? Well, cart horse, as impatient, durable, and much put upon it. A bit dull, really. How long have you been divorced? The easy ones first, eh? How long? Three years in September. Oh. My blood group is B. rhesus negative, and I shave with a single-blade safety razor. I have my hair cut when I remember, and I think pink shirts are for journalists and the less reputable kind of politician. I like pink shirts. Of course you do. That points up the gap in our age groups. If a civil war should ever break out, I'm sure it'll be over just such an issue. A pink shirt can't tell you the coloration of a man's mind. How are you so certain? I read about it. You believe everything you read? (laughs) Talking to you, Bill, is like nailing custard to the side of a moving bus. (laughs) I'll phone round for you. Thank you. What if Tom answers? Do I affect a well-bred surprise? Well, let's think. Uh, Tell him you heard he came back prematurely and that he's to call Cyril tomorrow. Do I tell Cyril? No, tell me first. All right. Do I get a reward? Sure, you can take a day off, provided it's a Sunday. Is there uh, tobacconist hereabouts? I don't think so. You're not a smoker, are you? I nibble on a small cigar sometimes. Oh, look, that pub will have some there. Should I keep the engine running? Uh, No, no. I may have to fight my way to the bar. Uh, Can I bring you something? Half a bitter on a stick? You're wasting time. What can I get you, Pat? Some of those cigars, please. Yes, the uh, tiddlers. Two packets. There you go. Sorry about the fiver. Don't apologise. Pat, I was rich myself once. 
Mm. You don't have the twopence, do you? Um, yes, I think I do. Dr. Livingstone, I presume. Two people? What? Oh, uh, yes. Here. Excuse me, have you got a minute? Who what? Crane your neck around the hatch, will you? Is this a game? No, no, there are two men sitting together. Yes, I said. I know the dark one. Do you happen to know who the big blonde one is? No, love, no. He drops in now and again, but he ain't a regular... Oh, I'm Ivy. He's sure about some service here. Hold your water bear's breath. I'm busy. I think he's a lawyer or something like that from the shambles. But you don't know his name? Can't help you there. No matter. Have a drink with me. Oh, well, it's a bit early. So I'll have a tiny gin. Yes, well, take it out of that, and uh, thank you very much. Oh, and it ain't even my birthday. Good help. My wish! Oh, I hear you. What are you having? Cramp! I oh, tell in these plays. Did you get some? Yes, thanks. Uh, don't go for a moment. Do you mind? I know. Oh, please. I wanted to confirm something. Yes. Who's that walking through the parlour, too? Tony Melvin, isn't it? That's right. No, if we wait a few moments. What is that? I spy. It's something like that. Ah, the side door, aren't you? See? You can't miss him. Who is he? Jack Tony met inside. The barmaid thinks he's a solicitor with an office in the shambles. And look at what he's climbing into. Deluxe model in upholstered silk. This must be good. Yes, his stamp looking days are long past. I'd like to know his name. Why? Nosy. Right, you can hit the switch now. I don't suppose you could follow our rich blonde, huh? Not without a reason. Uh, no, I withdraw the suggestion. Besides, he's far too quick for us. Home? Um. I could have caught him, you know. Oh, no matter. I am proud of my skill at the wheel, Mr. Grove. We aren't home yet. Sardonic swine. Technical Superintendent Proctor Ross Limited in Victor Works, Heston the Grange, Wearside. Dear Mr. Cassidy, following our conversations at Heston at the. Oh, you're busy, Bill. Oh, really? Come in, sir. I thought you might like a tot at my club. Oh, can you ask me tomorrow? If you wish. Is all as it should be, sir? No. Why don't you sit down? It's that wretched Neville again. Oh. Margaret called me an hour ago. The boy went out before breakfast without a word to anyone. She was wondering if he turned up here. Why can't the lad learn manners? Surely he can stop his gallivanting for a couple of minutes to call his mother on the phone and tell her he won't be home for a meal. I won't stand for that sort of rudeness. If he were here in this room, I'd, I'd kick his backside for him. No, you wouldn't. Never laid a hand on him, Bill, nor on the others. We had quite enough of that in my day. And I'm beginning to think maybe brute force is the only remedy for the real hard cases. Well, excuse me. No, oh. I, I was just leaving. Oh, then you won't want me again today. Uh, no, thanks, dear. Uh, did these circulars go out today? I'm posting them on my way home. Good girl. Uh, Bill, could mm -hmm. I... Well, you want to speak to Bill? Please. Uh, then I'll vanish. See you both in the morning. Good night, sir. And, and don't fret, Cyril. I expect you'll be home before you will. You'd better be. Good night, Cyril. He seems rather down. Uh, nothing a drink went put right. Well, what have you got? Tom Finley isn't at home. Ah. Oh. When I called, an answering service replied. It said the Finleys were on holiday and any urgent calls would be taken by his secretary at his business number here. That's one. Go on. I called Cowley's and spoke to the Green Secretary. He wasn't on duty until nine, so he couldn't vouch that somebody hadn't played a few holes before eight o'clock. But it couldn't have been Tom Finley in any case, because Mr. Finley was cruising in the Bahamas, the lucky dog. Oh, well, thanks for trying. So, Jock was hallucinating. It looks that way, doesn't it? Is that everything? I haven't finished. No? That man you say met with Tony Nolan in that park. Yeah, what about him? I found out who he is, I think. Tell me. I asked around the staff room at break time. I said, do any of you young ladies know a lawyer who looks like a bull elephant in a blonde wig? <laughs> and what do you know? Somebody did. A girl in the drawing office. She's been out with him, if that's the proper term. He's got a wide swathe in his time, I understand. So, what's his name? Uh, no, no, don't tell me. I'll 
Scribble it. Huh? Is that it? Yes. You. <laughs> I guess. I'm sorry to spoil the surprise. Victor Slade. Is the name significant? Slade is Tom Finley's phantom golfing partner. Good God. Why? You see, there was something in Tony's manner that made me curious, something furtive, and when he handed Slade a manila envelope in the pub, he was trying as hard as he knew to look invisible. But what's the meaning of it all? I can't say. It's just something in the air, a taint, a smell of things gone slightly rotten. Andrea, I owe you. A favour. Well, can I repay it with a meal? Like tonight, for instance? Uh, I can't. But I can make time for a reflective drink. Oh, splendid. We'll reflect together. Mm, nice. Another? I better not. Do you use this place much? I've been here for years. They've lowered the ceiling, I think. Or have I grown taller? That's probably what it is. You make jokes about almost everything, don't you, Bill? Do I? I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Not bad. Yet it's rather disconcerting. Perhaps that's why I do it. Perhaps it isn't. You had a daughter, didn't you? Yes. Yes, her name was Emma. Cyril told me. Do you mind? It's not a secret. But she died. Yes. Five years ago. She was eleven. Was she ill? Forgive me. If you don't want to talk about no, it... You might as well know. Don't tell me. No, no. Well, let's finish it. We owned a small farmhouse at Codrington. One day when I was in Belgium on business, a man entered the house and abducted Emma. He drove her to Leicestershire and imprisoned her in a caravan for a week. Then he strangled her and buried her in a turnip field. He was insane, of course, and he's going to spend what remains of his life in an institution... The same place, incidentally, from which a compassionate authority released him two weeks before he killed Emma. Oh. No, I don't comprehend. Our, our marriage didn't survive the shock. Please don't tell me your side. May I have another drink? Of course. Can you catch the bomb's eye? More of the same, huh? Please. I didn't know, Bill. Does it make a difference? It answers some questions. Really? I tell myself only facts have relevance. The rest is just rhetoric. Hard words. Hard facts. I had to phone my wife today to warn her about these takeover rumours. She's an important stockholder. After about 20 seconds, she hung up in my face. But why? I suppose because she's... Still asking the unanswerable questions. She needs somebody to blame. The criminal is protected by his madness. God is too far away. That leaves me. That's unjust. No. It's rhetoric. Madam, is that enough ice, sir? That's fine, thank you. Thanks. What should we drink to? <laughs> Let's drink to the rain. <laughs> the rain. And to all that falls upon. Bill? Neville. Where are you? I'm here. Are you busy? No. Come in. I'm sort of drenched. Yes, you are. Quick. How long have you been standing there? Oh, just a few minutes. Don't give us your coat. It's okay. Give just a few minutes, my eye. How long? I'm not sure. I thought we'd be back before this. Look at you. You're like a dish rag. You better get into a bath. Oh, when the cloth's really saturated, it starts to warm up. Did you know that? Yes, it's the first sign of pneumonia. I'll make you a hot drink. Oh, it's no bother. Yes, it is. Uh, you can spread those sodden duds on the radiator. Do the folks know where you are? No. I'm phoning them. Now, don't no. panic. I won't mention your waterlogged condition. Go on. Uncle Bill? Oh. Sodden duds. It's very good. Sort of evocative. Get going, will you? Mm. That was great. There's more. No, it's fine, thanks. Well, I'd offer you whiskey, too, but I'm afraid you'd accept it. Oh, not on top of soup, thanks. 
I, uh, I told your father you'd be staying here tonight. Is that all right? If you don't mind. Well, I don't mind. Why? Sorry? I mean, what brought you here? I just wanted to see you. Oh. Do you like coincidences? Some. Oh, here's one. Your father asked me this morning to look you up and give you a thorough talking to. Really? Yeah. Can you guess why? Because he's afraid to do it himself. But he's not afraid, never. He's unsure how to proceed, as I am. It seems you're developing into a problem, but that won't be news to you. What did you do today? Walked around. Couldn't you have called her? Didn't bother. Well, bother in future, will you? You haven't a go at me. You damn right I am. They care about you. They worry. Parents do, you know. Well, I can fend for myself. They don't think so. After all, they have only the record to go by. And that ain't very inspiring. Well, dozens of people get the elbow from school. Hundreds. But not twice in three years. And schools are phony. It's trivia raised to the highest power. I want to hear this. Well, isn't it? Is Cutler going to make it to the second 15 this year? <laughs> oh, let's hear it for Thompson, his A-level in applied carpentry. <laughs> oh, most of all, keep an eye on Faulkner, NJ, and see how he compares with Brother Jeff, head of house, school, and with more scholarships than a dog has fleas. None of it matters. Then what does? I don't know. But something else. Drugs? Drugs? You know... Narcotic alkaloids taken by injection, orally or by inhalation. Junk. Dope. <laughs> I'm serious now. You can't be. Oh, I've never used any of that stuff. Your mother found a hypodermic in your room. So? I found it. Yes, I did. In the laboratory down at the markets. I'm always finding junk. Sorry, no pun intended. And bringing it home. Well, Mother must have seen it in the box where I keep all my rubbish. Are you calling me? No. Well, didn't you liberate rubbish when you were young? Bus tickets. Well, there you are. I was about seven years old. And so? I'm immature. What's to become of you, Mel? <laughs> I'll probably drift into crime. <laughs> but I expect to do well at it. <laughs> Has Dad told you he's picked out a shrink for me? No. Has he? Mm. A oh, good man. Very solemn. Very expensive. I pity him. I'm not ill. But Dad's trying to cram me into a hole that won't fit. Everybody makes assumptions all the time. For an instance? Well, that I'd be better off in a boarding school. I wanted to live at home and I wanted to stay at a day school. But nobody asked me and I was the only one they should have consulted. But it were difficult at home. Oh, I couldn't help that. You got a bit feeble. And that's what I am. Feeble. You know, when I was all right, at the farm, with you and Aunt Gwen and, and Em. In those days, I was never bored or miserable. I had everything I wanted. If I tell you something very private, don't laugh, will you? Well. Emma and I were engaged. It sounds so silly when I say it. But it's true. When she... When it happened, I felt as if... as if I'd been cut into pieces. I think I'm still looking for the missing bits. <laughs> it's stupid, isn't it? Yeah, not just to me. Why do such things happen? God knows. I don't. Perhaps to... Remind us that we weren't meant to be happy. Oh, I want a drink. You know, like a beer? No, uh, not really. What would you really like to do, Matt? Yeah. You know, I want to go to Valencia. Why there? Yeah. Well, I've had this friend at the market. He's called Dwayne. Dwayne? For real? Well, he was christened Ronald or something like that, but he reckons Dwayne suits his image better. And what does Dwayne nay uh, Ronald do? He drives an eight-wheeler. Well, twice a month he takes a trip to Spain mm. to pick up tomatoes and stuff. And he said he'd take me along, provided I pay for my own food. Well, actually, he's off tomorrow. I'll just have to forget it, I suppose. Oh. Well, I'm broke. Mum would probably finance me, but Dad would raise the roof. 
How long would you be gone? Ten days or so. Do you have a current passport? Yeah, why? Hmm. I might stake you. Really? I might. We'll talk tomorrow in the morning, and if I do fork out, you have to promise to keep in touch with your parents. Even free spirits have obligations, do you hear me? Yes, sir. Excellent. <laughs> you know, perhaps it's me who should be seeing you shrink. <laughs> uh, I do have some papers to shuffle. What about you? Oh, I'm drooping. Well, I'll find a hammock for you. Oh, dear God. What's wrong? I hope you haven't found your niche for life. Driver's mate. <laughs> well, it's a start, Uncle Bill. Oh, so young, so glib. <laughs> Let's make up a bed. <laughs> I've studied the contract, sir. And? We have until the end of May before the penalties are invoked. Is that time enough, Bill? And plenty, provided the foundries don't send us another batch of duff casing. Make a note, Andrea. I'll call Maltby and insist on a proper check before the stuff leaves his premises. Now, at long last, some good news. We're in the Gulf Consortium. Oh, well done, us. I had confirmation <laughs> this morning. You'd better rough out a production plan, Bill. Sure. Now, don't bother with detail until you hear from the Italians. And you, Tony, had better arrange a meeting with the partners to discuss financing. I'll get on to it today. Good. Uh, there's no other business, is there? The Herald, sir. Ah, oh, yes. The, uh, the Herald's editor agreed to print our retraction in Friday's issue. I think that's the last we'll ever hear of that foolishness. Right, we can break this up. Are you free for lunch, Bill? Oh, I think so. Yes. One fifteen, all right. I'll be there. Oh, Tony, have you got a minute? Of course. Could you pop into my office in about ten minutes? Can you tell me what it's about? Dementias. Mine. Oh. Huh. Yeah, okay. In ten minutes, then. Mm -hmm. Gwen, it's Bill again. Now, please don't hang up. I'd, I'd like to meet with you somewhere. What for? To talk over that matter I mentioned yesterday. You had my answer. Speak to my solicitor. No, that won't do, Gwen. Couldn't we... This video was uploaded to the channel Thinking Out Louder. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the Thinking Out Louder channel. Thank you. Meet for just a few minutes. Gwen? I'm not up to seeing people right now. Well, surely I'm not just people. Look, listen, I, I merely need to know if any approach has been made to you about your shareholdings in Faulkner. Gwen? There hasn't. Does that satisfy you? <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you. Would you uh, like to talk to me? No. Is there anything you want? Time regained. Do you have some of that in stock? No, Gwen. Then I shan't bother you. Goodbye. Reporting is ordered. Oh, uh, come in and take the wet off. Thanks. I'm all attention. This is uh, difficult to say, Tony, so I'll let it straight out. I'm short of cash. Yes? I have a few accounts I won't be able to cover. Everything I own seems to be tied up in one way or another. Liquidity's an eternal problem. Uh, yes, it? and it's pressing rather hard on me right now. You, uh, you do believe me, don't you? Not altogether. Oh, good for you. I've uh, taken up with a young person. Oh. Very fetching girl, but she has expectations, you know, of a <laughs> nice flat, a little runabout, and some other expensive goodies. It's not going to last, but I want to pay for my pleasure without entanglement. You would do a share of fun, Bill? I think so. Now... The nub is, the only realisable assets I have are my debentures. It would always take over talk humming about. Just wind in the trees. Yes, we realise that, Tony, but I gave my word to Mr Falconer that I'd hold on to all my shares for the time being, so what I'm proposing has to be strictly between us. Uh, let's clarify a bit. You want to sell some of your stock? I do, and soon. And I guess you want me to find a buyer? If you know the market, Tony, who better? Ah. Well, there's not much scope here. Well, what about the pension fund? Oh, I'd need Tom Finley's approval. Yes, yeah, if only he were here. Yeah. How much do you have to raise, Bill? Twenty-five. Hundreds. Thousand. I see. <laughs> well, the young person must be very special. She is, Terry. Well, yes. I know of a broker in Birmingham who might be willing to take them off your hands. Would he let me buy them back if I needed to? That's something which can't ever be guaranteed, Bill. Oh. This chap has a huge volume of investments passing through his office. I see. 
How soon could you let me know? Uh, Monday next. That's the earliest. All right. I'll arrange to get the bonds. It, there's another thing, Bill. What's that? These fixed debentures, they're not a popular item. You'll have to let them go to discount. Five percent of face value? As much as that. I might be able to claw a point back, but I can't promise. Let's see. Go ahead. Only if you're sure. The devil's driving. Do it. And uh, take a commission for yourself. Oh, certainly not. You're sure? I couldn't. That's the act of a pal, Tony. I shan't forget it. Oh, I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, this has to be a secret transaction. Of course. Oh, it's all right, Tom, dear. We've done here, OK, Tom. It's on the line. Excuse me, lovely one. Master Tony seems well satisfied. Why not? He's going to be a star. Have you been feeding him cream? No. Herring. What brings you here so hot cheek? I'd like your dictation tapes, please. In the basket. Cyril was quite bullish this morning, wasn't he? That's the Cyril of old. He was quite a force, you know, and the fire's not extinguished yet. Is there something on your mind? I spent an hour on the phone last night. You were feeling lonely? No, I was doing a favour for a friend, though I may be presumptuous in the use of the word. I called the man in London. How went it? He's agreed to help. Oh, splendid. Yes, but his offer has a hook buried in it. He insists on seeing me. And you don't want that? Not at the moment, no. He told me he's divorced now and wants me to celebrate the joyous event with him. So your allure is undimmed? It would seem so. You see, Bill, all my attention is taken up with another man. Oh. And my taste doesn't run to affairs in tandem. It had better be worth it. I'll get this typed up for you. Andrea. Yes? You don't have to do anything you don't want to. No, I don't. The hell of it is, I don't know what I do want. See? Hmm. This uh, beef's all string and gristle. <laughs> uh, will you want pudding? No, not for me, thanks. I'll just have coffee, I think. You too? Yes, please. Where's Alfred? Cunning old devil, and he sees what he wants to. <laughs> Was my nevy any bother? As good as gold. No? Did you have a chinwag with him? Oh, he talks a little, yes. Did you find out anything? I think he has a severe case of adolescent jitters. He's not sure of his directions yet, but he's determined not to go the way of his older brother. Well, he's envious of Jeff. Well, quite the opposite. Quite well, my opinion, sir. Well, run him on a loose rein. Well, what's he running on now? I mean, don't show your disapproval. Go along with him a little. You can trust him. You really can. There's solid stuff in him. I thought it was all backing and filling. Well, he's a little immature in some ways. He, he had a severe shock a few years ago, and it's still reverberating inside him. What shock? He lost a close friend. It really hurts, and he's buried the pain in... Reckless behaviour. You never mentioned any of this to me. It was a difficult thing to confide, I imagine. Well, this, uh, this drug nonsense is all part of the same picture. Oh, you can forget all about drugs, Cyril. Forget about it? Then why, it's sick. Well, he doesn't take drugs, and he never did. But the syringe Margaret found... He picked it up in a public toilet. Listen, in all the months since he was chucked from school, have you ever seen him even slightly intoxicated? No, I haven't. Oh, when I've seen him at all, that is. <laughs> then take it from us both. He's as clean as that tablecloth. Well, uh, cleaner. Oh, sure. Take him to a doctor, if you don't believe me. Well, I can't take him anywhere at the moment. He... Ah, Alfred. <laughs> Have you come to clear away? Beef to your liking, Mr. Falconer. Mm, well, I could eat of it, yes. I think it must have come from a pretty elderly bullock, that one. It's the butcher, sir. He won't do what he's bid. Oh, no matter. Uh, how are your feet today? A little spiteful, sir. I'm going to immerse them as soon as they get home. Anything sweet for you? No, just a coffee, thanks. Well, what about Mr. Grove? He'll have coffee, too. Okay. Right. Mr. Findlay still enjoying the ocean breezes, is he? At last hearing, Alfred. Oh, that's grand. I was a blue water man myself, you know. And so you've told us. Yes. Pendry boy, me, on the old Aquitania. All gone. 
Nowadays, it's chips in a bag and hurtling through the clouds six miles above the water. Where is it going to get us, sir? Into New York, I should think. You're right. And back before breakfast. I'll bring your coffee as soon as able, gentlemen. <laughs> Did you hear what you said about his feet? How old is he? God alone knows, and he's not telling. He was here in my father's time, and he was no spring pulley then. He really should be pensioned. No. <laughs> he has been twice, but he didn't take. <laughs> Made any plans for the weekend? Oh, I've a couple of things to do. Taking work, how am I supposed to? It's been piling up while I've been away. Susie's bringing the grandchildren, so I'll be spending the weekend on all fours. You love it, Cyril. Up to a point. These days, my idea of real luxury is to lie in a deck chair fast asleep and the children in their cots likewise disposed. <laughs> Why don't you take a run out and see Gwen? I'd be wasting petrol. That bad, eh? Oh, it's not bad, Cyril. It's a nullity. I did manage to squeeze a few words from her about her shares. Anything to report there? She's not had an offer. Mm. Andrea's off to town to sound out her tame banker. She shouldn't have volunteered. Mm, why is that if she wants to? Well, she's in a bind, so competing claims on her affections. The new versus the not-so-new. Active, is she? Yes, it looks like him. He hasn't mentioned a boyfriend. Who is he? She hasn't given him a name. Well, then I should think of him as Felix... The cat? The fortunate, you unlettered fellow. Help us off. Hmm? Alfred's bearing down on us. So. Can you borrow them from somewhere? The rosaries, maybe. That's too long winded. Well, what do you suggest? New templates. Would you cut them yourself? Yeah, uh, me and one other. I'll need overtime, Jock. Ah, uh, then you better have it. At Wednesday, the latest, okay? Oh, I'll give it a go. You'll do better than that, I hope. Oh, hey, excuse me, I've got a visitor. Good morning, Alec. You got my message? That's why I'm here. Let's get out of the Bill. Right. Hey, here's something you should see, Bill. It hmm? came in on Saturday's post. Jack Hardy got one, too. You'll observe it comes in the form of an announcement. It has been decided and so forth. Mm. There's no suggestion of a vote being taken. Well, now let's get it straight. Up to the present, all major decisions on investment have been voted on by the trustees. That's what the rules say. But now they're to be made by an investments committee. Aye, a committee from which the employees' representatives are excluded. And you'll notice, Bill, mm. this self-elected jaunter will inform the trustees of its doings in an annual report. Mm. Man, think of the damage they could do in a whole year without a watchdog on them. Soup sickening, isn't it? Aye, ah, too true. You can stretch coincidence only so far. What do the fund's articles of association say? Oh, not a lot. I've been over them with a microscope. There's nothing there to say they can't rejig the procedures. You'll challenge this, won't you? You're damn right, I will. Ah, but there's a snag. No point in calling a general meeting of the trustees while Tom Finley's on his holidays, so-called. Finley's back in ten days. Hmm? I'm working on a different tack, which might give us something soon, even so the two things might not be connected. Look, I have to go. Uh, thanks for showing me this. Hey, Bill. What is it? Now, you wouldn't bluff a pal, would you? What do you mean? Well, there's a good distance between the boardroom and the workshop. I have only your word that you don't know what's going on. Yeah, just my word. Oh, come on, let's get ourselves out of this. I have an idea, Jock. Aye, what's that? Convene a trustees meeting. Yes, without Finlay. Ask them to reconsider this proposal. Question the legality of it. Tell them anything you like, Alec, only keep the cauldron bubbling. Well, listen, I'll leave four or five days. Good, and don't worry. When your flakes are in the air and the scent is crumbling... I attack. You've got it. I'll look pretty stupid playing a handful to damn all, won't I? You've done it before. Aye, hey, hey, now watch it. <laughs> Hold the line. England expects... Aye, but Scotland performs... Morning. Oh, hello, Tony. Nice weekend. Not very. Have you seen the correspondence file for C.P. Collins? It's in the tray. No. Help yourself. Did you see anything of Bill Groves over the weekend? No. Why should I? He's found himself a bird. So? Oh, I wondered if you might have seen him around town in glamorous company. I didn't. I was in London. 
this all we have? Uh, there's some stuff relating to them under Bailey and Dawes. Then it must be there. Shall I file this for you? Oh, I'll do it. Andrea. What? I had a notion you were it. I mean, she, don't I? You've lost me. Bill's girlfriend. I thought she might have been you. Oh? And why did you suppose that, Mr. Nolan? Intuition. Well, it's not working today. No. Well, it couldn't have been really. She's the mercenary type, I hear, not a simple home-loving girl like yourself. And only women gossip, they say. <laughs> only women gossip incessantly, Andrea. Men are more discriminating. Would you like to come for a drink? Not this week, Tony. And next? I can't see that far ahead. This week, I want the company of dogs and children only. Well, that's very compassionate of you, Miss Brooke. I try to be. Well, won't you spare a little charity for me? It isn't necessary. Well, why not, pray? Nobody is kinder to you than you, Tony. Ouch. Morning, Bill. Can I break in on you? I was just leaving. Do you have anything for me? I'll talk to you later. Excuse me. Take a seat. How did your weekend go? Uh, agreeably. <laughs> Yours? I kept busy. I have that item you asked for. So, so. Yeah, I got lucky. My contact was in the market for some fixed interest securities. One envelope for you, Bill. Oh, thanks. Uh, can I peek? It's all in order. Uh, when will you want the bonds? Uh, before the cheque clears, if you don't mind. I've arranged to pick them up on Wednesday. That suits me. Metro Charter. Don't know the name. Merchant Bankers, Bill. They're the end users. I see. Um, I'll need to know the face value of the debentures. Yes, I have a note of this here. Ah, thanks. They've discounted only two and a half, which was pretty generous, I think. I, uh, I talked them down a little. Uh, I'm obliged if there's anything I can do Not for you. Not a thing, Bill. Except, yes. well, I was going to say, if you ever find yourself strapped for cash again, I could probably place more of your stock. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. Heaven forbid. But the officer was there. Right. Oh, hello, sir. Good morning. Tony, will you excuse us for a moment? Uh, yes, of course. We'll finish our talk later, Bill. Sure. Where have you been, Bill? Uh, the works. Why? You might have left work. I'm sorry I went there straight from home. Is something amiss? That understates it, rather. What happened? Did you give Neville some money last week? Yes, I did. Oh, for crying out loud. Is he all right? No, he isn't, Bill. Not one little bit. He's in Spain. He's travelling on a lorry that's broken down and he spent last night in a police station. He's not hurt, is he? No, but I am, Bill. Deeply. How could you do it? Seemed a good idea. Still does. But as a child, his passport doesn't say so. It's my son we're discussing, Bill. Don't you think you've taken a little too much on yourself? It would seem so. Why so secretive? I didn't hide anything, Cyril. But you didn't tell me either. You should have told me at lunch on Friday. I wanted to. The chance slipped by. How has Margaret taken the news? As usual. She's worried about the state of his underwear. <laughs> it's not funny, Bill. What's the devil going to do? He didn't confide that to me. How much can you tell in a three-minute phone call? But he did call. That's an improvement, isn't it? I half a mind to fly down there. The British consul may have to be called in. Does Neville think so? Neville doesn't have the capacity to think. I'd be grateful for you to confine your curiosity to business. The name on the chairman's door is still mine, Bill. Just consider that for a moment. Oh, God. Yes? Bill? Yes, Andrea? We've had a call through the switchboard. Yes? Can you phone a Mountford number? My ex-wife? No, Bill, it's the hospital there. Do you know why? Andrea? She's had an accident. That's all I know. Are you ready to take the number? She's badly confused, and she suffered exposure. How did she come to do it? An accident while out walking. Can you believe her? Is there a reason why I shouldn't, Mr. Groves? Before we go in, yes? has she ever had a depressive illness, a, a severe one? Our daughter died. My wife took it hard. Was that a, a recent loss? It happened five years ago. She hasn't been very responsive. She talks of going home. Will you persuade her to stay? I'll mention it. To be frank, I have very little influence over her. But you answered our call. 
I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Now, don't stay too long, will you? tried to pick some celandine on a ledge. The night was bad and I tumbled over and over. That old quarry above the Pettit place, I was out there most of the night. Oh, I'd rather not talk about it. But I'll take you from work. Oh, don't bother about that. The doctors say you're uncooperative. I want to go home. A few days here might do you good. I'm the best, the only judge of what's good for me. You're the most vocal, anyway. That's it, soothe me. Do you hate me, Bill? Is that what you want, Gwen, to be hated? Last week on the phone, I told you a lie. Did you? I said nobody had made me an offer for those shares you gave me. I was lying. I sold them ten days ago. Well, did you hear me? Yes. Oh, that was stupid, Gwen. It was a good offer. More than face value. I didn't think it would matter. Who, oh, Gwen? Oh, the buyer mm. of a private bank in Birmingham. Metro Charter. Yes. I guessed as soon as you phoned that I was wrong to sell. I was afraid to... T Ow! What's wrong? Nothing. I just can't lie. I'm on the spot too long. I have something else to tell you. I can wait. No, then. I might change my mind. You have to hear it now. Concerns, Emma. Well, you're tired and in pain, Gwen. This can wait. God, stop being so deferential. My mind is clear. I know what I'm saying. All right. I'll listen. On the day the lunatic took Emma away, I wasn't at the farm. You, you told the police you were working in the garden? I lied. When all that horror, that preventable horror was taking place. I was in a motel on the motorway. I was there from 11 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, and I wasn't alone. Then there was. Did you hear me? Yes. That's one sin I don't expiate. I don't ask or expect your forgiveness, not yours, nor God's, nor anyone's. There's no agency on earth can make it right. I blamed you, I still do. This is one of your cruel jokes, isn't it? I could tell you the man's name, but you don't know him anyway. I wasn't there when she needed me. But then neither were you. No, you were role-playing, bashing around the world an international engineer with huge responsibilities, which left you no time for your family. It wasn't like that, Gwen. How did you know? Were you there to even ask? I didn't want that man up as much as I wanted you. But vain and silly as he was, he was there and he wanted me. I'm leaving. You hate me now, don't you? No. Oh, I'm disappointed. There's nothing there to hate. You always loved her more than you loved me. That's not true. I want to die. Why can't I? Perhaps you have. This cancels everything, then. That's what I want. <laughs> Mr. Groves, did you persuade her to stay? No. You'd better let her do what she wants. Well, I could arrange a home nurse for her. Yes, why don't you? She can afford it now. Was there something else, Doctor? Does Mrs. Groves have any close friends? I really don't know. I can tell you, though, that half a minute ago she lost one, if you'll excuse me. Please, Mr. Groves. It's no use, is it? Not unless you have a cure for love gone bad. No, it isn't. Well, thank you for coming. Goodbye. 
Help you, madam. I'm looking for someone. It's all right. I see you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Do you like my new office? It's not very well lit. Mm, no. But I shall be shortly. Sit down. Thank you. Care for a drink? Not right at this minute. You've caused a minor flap at the office. Well, I'm sorry about that. I couldn't face the rest of the working day. How was your wife? My ex-wife, my right dear. She had a ball. Nothing serious. Emotionally, she hasn't changed much. Normal Gwen, twisted with guilt and as hurtful as hell. Would you like me to go? No, stay. With two more of these, I might recover my humanity. You have some news for me? It can wait. Then, while you're waiting, I can show you something. Tony gave it to me this morning. It's a payment for a cod shares deal I asked him to sell for me. Yeah. Metro Charter. Mm. 25,000? I told him I was subsidising a white off lump of that. I know about this bank, Bill. Do you? Uh, do you know that Gwen has one of these made out for a much larger amount and hers is for real? Oh, no. Oh, yes. She sold out 15% of the equity. With all the bits and pieces snapped up, I guess we're ripe and ready for takeover. You don't have to be. Oh, come on. The burglars are in the building. So you just roll over and die. I thought you were tough. Well, I used to think so, too. Barman, another one of these, please. Yes, sir. I'm just emerging from Minster. Oh, and rolls and treats and candy Children dreams, each aisle a fantasy. Every corner right. holds a story right. in this grocery odyssey. Shopping carts are trusty steeds rolling free. In this supermarket saga, we're dancing in glee. Oh, yeah. The checkout symphony, a melody so sweet, our cup brimming with joy, a journey so complete. Groceries and tall, our treasures we've won. In this supermarket escapade, the fun has just begun. Cruising through the aisles, a supermarket delight. Who knew shopping could be this bright? So snacks and hand, the journey spun. Chasing the sun. Back tooth at least we Tell me. Well, I used to be on pretty good terms with myself. I was a maker. I loved clever and intricate machines, but I was too good at what I did, and the law says that what you love too well must be taken from you. When the road's rocky as it is now, I wish I were back in simpler times. Don't you wish that? No. I'm nostalgic for the future. Lucky oh, Thank you. May I do some special pleading of my own? Well, go ahead. It's all the way. I got that information you asked for. It did you? I always knew you were. Well, don't skate over it, Bill. It didn't come cheap. And if you're not prepared to use it, I might think I've been had. Have I? Well? What have you got? Never mind. Will you use it? Do stop pouring that stuff into yourself. Yes, ma'am. I'll be good. All right, then. This is what my contact gave me. There's an Australian mining syndicate called Drover's Ridge. Have you heard of them? No. Well, no matter. They're in the market to take over engineering companies which are undercapitalized but have other strategic assets. Falconer's largest unrealized asset is its, its pension, pension fund. fund. You're quick. Not really good. Drover's Ridge has a slush fund operated from Birmingham. Metro Charter. Exactly. There's nothing sleazy about Metro. It's properly incorporated and everything. And their money is real enough. Yes, and there's a lot of it. They hope to make much more. They have a scheme whereby they can pledge the assets of a reliable institution, your pension fund, say, against dollar loans in the European money market. And the original company, Falconers. Who needs it? Just flush it away. Scary, isn't it? Mere commercial acumen, no chap. Do you have anything on paper? My friend made notes for me. Where are they? I have them with me. Can I see? Of course. I'll have to burrow in my bag. Oh. What? I nearly forgot. Drover's Ridge have a local contact man to handle all their business. Can you guess who he is? It's on. 
I'll bet you a pound you can't name him. All right, for a pound, Victor Slade. Wrong. Tom Finley. That's a quid you owe me, mister. Ah, here they are. All the relevant stuff is on the second sheet. Yes, Finley's the shogun. Slade fetches and carries for him. And Tony, who pulls his strength? Finley again. It's more than a quid, I hear. What's this? Oh, that shouldn't be in there. May I? You want? A street photographer took it. This is your special friend? Yes, that's him. You move in exalted company. You won't mention his name, will you? Why should I? Yeah. Thanks. You seem well matched. Seeming isn't quite enough. Well, what's to do? I'd like another favour from me. Make it a small one. Can you phone Cyril at home for me? All right. Do it before seven if you can. Tell him you've spoken to me and that I'm preparing a memorandum I want him to read tomorrow morning. Very well. Anything else? No, no. I'd like to thank you for that. You don't need to. I'm grateful. And not just for these notes. Don't mention it again, please. And make an appointment with your dentist. What? For the back tooth. (laughs) Yes. It's better now. I must go. Good night, Andrea. Good night, Bill. Speaking. I have a call from Marbella for you. Uh, from where, please? Marbella, in Spain. Oh, uh, will you connect me, please? You can go ahead, caller. Uncle Bill? I thought it was you. How are you? Fine, great. I've got a job. Have you indeed? Doing what? I'm a butler. <laughs> I thought you said butler. I did. Butler and some other things. And I, I hear you did time in the cells. Oh, just one night. Spanish hospitality. The wagon broke down. Oh, what happened to, uh, what's his name, Wayne? Dwayne? Mm. Uh, last sighting, he was making smoke in the direction of Seville. Ah, uh, ne- Nev, who's paying for this call? The governor. Your father? No, no, my employer, a cockney chap. Uh. He's in the villa business, Mr. Rosser. Mm-hmm. It's all right, they're out having dinner with friends. <laughs> I have to be nursemaid. What? I'm looking after the kids. There's two of them, a boy and a girl. I'm teaching them to swim. Uh, how, how long are you staying there? Well, Dad says as long as I like. Provided I don't make a nuisance of myself. Mm. Actually, I thought he'd have a fit. Well, I'm glad things turned out so well. Dob, one of the kids is crying, but I'll have to go. Yes. Uh, well, thanks for calling. Uncle Bill? Yes. Are you all right? Well, better than I was. Oh. I gave you some stick, didn't he? Oh, you smart blows, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Look, I'll write you a letter. I look forward to it. Oh, she's screaming now. I'll really have to go. Good night. Good night, Neville. Uh, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, sir? It's true, isn't it? Yes. Tom Finley's been with us 20 years, and Tony's the son of one of my oldest friends. One expects this sort of thing from strangers, but... Oh, God, where's one put one's trust? It's all about money, isn't it? Yes, sir, the easy kind. Who are these drovers, rich people? Speculators. They made fortunes in that nickel boom of a few years ago. I know the kind. Nothing in the ground and all their profits in paper. Is Bill Handy? He's next door. We'd better have him in. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Faulkner? Yes, Andrew? Alec Craigie will be joining us. Oh, quite right. Thank you. Um, uh, Switchboard, refuse all calls for me in the next half hour. Yes, thank you. Will you come in, Bill? Well, can you lay on coffee for us all, Andrew? I'll do it now. Good morning. How are you? Dumbfounded. Sit if you want to. Now, uh, stand. Thank you, this isn't a reprimand, you know. Quite the opposite. <laughs> what a filthy business, Bill. You have to go for the groin, you know. Finley! I nursed him into a directorship where nobody else would give him a job. There's always one in the bag of apples. Sir. I counted two. Tony, well, he's no threat. I don't want him here. Neither do I. But you need to squeeze him a bit before you discard him. Why? The proof's in this paper. That's not proof, sir. It's surmised. Then what do we do? Roast him over a slow fire? Show him what we have and see which way he jumps. He'll deny everything. He can't deny this check. Have you asked him in? At 11. We have a few minutes to wait. What do you think of Neville's new job? 
Well, I didn't tell you about that. No, he did. He started to run up expensive phone bills. I'm not angry, are you? I'm furious with him. I believe that. With him and you, Bill Groves. Great adventure for the boy. A male nurse made a footman butler. He's far too young to be a butler. I thought I might fly down there with Margaret and see if he's behaving himself. Why don't you? Well, I'll give him a couple of weeks to find his feet. Uh, did he tell you about his employer? Well, just that he was a Londoner called Rosser. It sounds like a bad handle to me. All the better. For a grown man, Bill, you're damned irresponsible. He ought to go back to school, and I don't mean the kind he was chucked from. Oh, excuse me. Yes? Well, send him straight in, will you? Thank you. Alec. Well, what was I saying? Nev's education. Ah, yes. Uh, I'm going to dig my heels in on that, Bill, unless he can prove to me he's a genius and doesn't need it. Uh, come in. All right. Ah, oh, hello, Alec. Uh, come right in. Uh, you, you better cast your eyes on this memorandum Bill drew up. I have the substance of it, I think. As we discussed it over the phone this morning. No. Well, look at it anyway. Angie is arranging copy for us. Oh, grand. This is pretty detailed stuff. Where did you get it? My clever secretary. Incredible. Finlay the bagman. Explains quite a few things, doesn't it? But why would he do a thing like this? Greed and impatience. What I'd like to know is, where is he and what's he playing at? Well, whatever it is, it's not scratch go. <laughs> Come on, dear, the trolley. Good. Well, then we can help ourselves. Morning, Miss Brooke. Mr. Craigie. Oh, apropos, Alec. I. I'd like to keep this within the family. Uh, Jack Harding has to know. I understand that. But there's no need to involve the union branch, is there? Oh, no, I wasn't intending to. Uh, we don't have any well wishes down there, and a mud like this could give them ammunition. Well, to be frank, I don't really listen to anything I had to say. Oh, that's a fact. They tell me I wore out my radicalism taking it to too many party conferences. Come in. Now, Tony, come in. Thanks. Enjoy Morning, us. everybody. Uh, hello there. Could you take some coffee? Now, what's the occasion of this little gathering, sir? We've come to wish Tom Finlay a last farewell. Sounds rather portentous. He's not dead, is he? Not dead, Tony. Just gone before. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Can somebody lend me a spoon? Here, take mine. Thanks. You're not... Serious about Mr. Finley, are you? I was trying out one of my rare jokes, Tony. Oh. <laughs> In fact, Tom's only one of a number of subjects under review. Well, I think we'll all be more comfortable seated. <clears throat> Alec, uh, uh? why don't you let Tony see that memorandum? What is it? It's a sort of appreciation, I prepared. Yeah. When you've read it, we'd like to hear your comments on it. Uh, you heard the good news of the Gulf contract, Alec. Oh, aye, 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 Dad. Tony's finished reading. What's your opinion? It's fiction, isn't it? If it is, you helped to write it. What's your relation to Victor Slade, Tony? It's a friendship. One that goes back several years. Look, is this some sort of inquisition? If it is, I won't stand for it. Last Thursday you met him at lunchtime in a pub, the Checker. What of it? We often drink together. But on Thursday you stayed there just long enough to hand Slade a large manila envelope. Would you care to tell us what was in that envelope? No. Not because I have anything to hide. I just won't be interrogated in this way, if you'll excuse Sit me. Sit down! I'll... That's a plain talk, Tony. We have a pretty detailed understanding of what's been going on. From Alec Craigie, we know that Finley has made Slade privy to our pension fund business. That's a fact. And we know Slade has been touting shareholders with offers for their stock. I had a call only this morning about one such offer. Where could Slade have acquired those names and addresses without you to supply them? Well, that's not difficult. He could have got that information from a number of sources. Then tell us a couple. One, then, Tony. Another member of Star. Who? One of the clerks, a typist, anybody. Not the company secretary. In this instance, absolutely not. All right. Let's leave that. Perhaps you could tell me about this check instead. Well, you know all about that. I'm not sure that I do. It's payment for sale of some of your shareholding. Where did you get it? Oh, for God's sake! From whom, Tony? Slade or Finley? Neither. An investment broker in Birmingham. Doesn't he have a name? John Smith. 
Or Joe Blow, maybe? Your job is dangling on the end of a fraying thread, Tony. You'll cut it anyway. That's right. So why should I fill in the gaps for you? Your manner of leaving depends on it. The result's the same. I shan't make it easy for you. Then will you tell us where Finlay is? In the West Indies. He was here Thursday morning, so that's another lie. He flew out there on Saturday. I saw him off. Are you in contact with him? Yes. Then give him a message from me. I called a full board meeting for this afternoon, and when it rises, he'll be a director of this company no longer. With a rider from me, please. And another week, he'll be chucked off the pension fund. It looks like an all-round defeat. Hmm. You think so? We have almost 30% of the stock. That entitles us to at least one seat on the board. Try and get it. As a matter of interest, who was going to run the newly constituted Fortos? It didn't happen, so why discuss it? Because if it were a cabal of you, Finley, and that sticky-fingered slave, you'd have to liquidate within a year. Between the gang of you, you couldn't run a bus shelter. I'd like to go. I wish you would, you conniving little twerp. Oh, we'd have kept Andrea Brooke. For her contacts, you understand? In bed, as well as that. Sorry, love, we have sources quite as good as yours. Good morning. That's one rat, less in the barn. Would you excuse me, please? I hope you weren't upset by that jibe by Nolan. Excuse me. I'd better make tracks myself. Well, stay and eat with us. I can't. This nonsense isn't finished, is it? No. But if we resist hard enough, they'll soon lose interest. We've been here before, Alec. Aye, and you've only yourselves to blame. Don't you know that capitalism is predicated on the exploitation of man... By man? And what socialism, Alec? The exact reverse, of course. Bye-bye. We'll call you after the board meeting. Ah, uh, you better. I'll we'll be waiting. Well? I'd like to talk about Andrea Brooke. I thought he was supposed to be tough, Bill. Turn me on, that so fits in. We have a vacancy on the executive staff. Nolan's job. Could she do it? Better than he did, is my guess. Will you ask her? Yes, I'd like to. Do it now. I think she'd appreciate the gesture. I don't suppose you care to lunch with a tiresome old man. No, but I'll break bread with you. One o'clock? Twelve thirty. Interesting times, Bill. Aren't they? I'll see you at lunch. Mr. Graves. Uh, no, Andrea Brooke is. Have you seen her? I think she's in the stationery store. Then I'll look there, thank you. If I went astray, sir, would you look for me? You are naughty. <laughs> Hi. What's good today? Oh, uh, paper clips. Any in particular? We have all kinds. Uh, I'm not a paperclip type. Uh, what can you show me in blotting paper? Blotting paper? Mm, uh, I prefer blotting paper. <laughs> Your shirt tails really are in a twist, don't they? Tony Nolan called me a whore. <laughs> he should talk. He's right. No matter how I rationalise it, it comes out soiled. Lust and business don't mix. I still like it. Yeah. There's a vacancy for the job of company secretary. Would you like to apply? Who do I have to sleep with to get it? The man in the moon. Thanks. I shan't bother. Then what can a grateful falcon has offered you? How about everything as it was ten days ago? I thought you were nostalgic only for the future. No, I was pretty ropey. Play flippers with me. I don't know. Yes, yet. you do. I take a coin and flip it. See? Queens or shields. What are we playing for? If I win, I take you to dinner, and if you lose, I take you to dinner anyway. No, I might lose. Why are you being so deliberately nice to me? I want you to take dictation for me. The other man knows, doesn't he? Yeah. Yes, he knows. 
Does he care? He doesn't seem to. So we can assume he doesn't care too much for him now. Sometimes Bill Groves, you can be pretty damn thick. Only when I want to be, Miss Brooke. <sighs> what happened? I wasn't free. Tell me about it. One day. Soon. Soon as you may. But not here, and certainly not when you have mascara running down your chin. I haven't, have I? It looks as if you're about to go on a commando raid. Really? No, I'm kidding. You look very nice. Fit to be seen in public? In all places, private and public. If I go to dinner with you... Yes? With one thing leading to another... What? The PA and the boss. What a flumping cliche. But take our offer and you won't be a PA. You'll be a colleague. And colleagues are required to dine together for the good of the company. Are they? That's the law. Oh, I mustn't break the law. I should hope not. Here we go. You call. In Intimations of a Raid by John Kirk Morris, Bill Wallace played Bill and Angela Phillips, Andrea. Cyril was Conrad Phillips, Alec, Henry Stamper, Tony Nolan, Christian Rodska, Gwen, Rosalind Adams, Neville, Mark Straker, Alfred, Paul Nicholson, the Doctor, Jane Gambier, and the Typist, Erica Irian. Intimations of a Raid was directed in Bristol by Sean McLaughlin. <laughs>